Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video all about flight controllers and it's aimed at those of you that have had nothing to do with flight controllers but have been trying to watch some of my other series and maybe getting lost very quickly. Now this was really brought home the need for this video uh, over the past week or so with two incidents. First of all, I've been working here uh, in my uh, man cave with a friend of mine and we're building him an autonomous wing. He's just recently learned to fly FPV and now he wants to have all that I now have goodness so he can do GPS return to home. He wants an on-screen display. But we didn't have uh, a model for him that would work like that. So what he asked was, when you're building it, can I kind of uh, come and sit with you and can, you can explain what you're doing and how it all works? And I thought, you know what, that's really interesting because I don't have a video for that. And then that was followed up only the other day by a patron of mine kind of getting in touch, just saying, look, I love all the videos and stuff, but the build videos, I get completely lost. So if you know anything about flight controllers or have done any flight controller setups and you've followed along and done any builds, then you know what? This video isn't for you. Go and do something else and watch something more useful. If, however, you are one of those pilots that watch a lot of videos on things like flight controllers, INAV, beta flight, Ardu pilot, uh, with planes, quadcopters, multi rotors, and you're desperately trying to follow along, but it's all not making a lot of sense, then stay with me. This video is exactly aimed at you. Now let's first of all talk about what a flight controller does. Now normally in, let's take an example of a radio controlled plane, the way it works is that we have the receiver and then all the servos and the speed controller for the motor if it's electric plug into the receiver directly. Now with a flight controller that is a little bit of electronics that sits between the receiver and everything else on the model. And the flight controller is pretty clever. It actually controls all of the servos and ESCs and makes the model fly. And what it's doing is it's listening to what you want the model to do from the signals coming in from the radio receiver. So it knows where all your throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and bits and pieces are. And then it's feeling through its own onboard sensors how the model is moving and then translating that into what needs to happen with either the control surfaces or the speed controllers to actually give you what you're asking for on the controls. Now simple stabilizers for fixed wing kind of do a mini light version of that but flight controllers, modern flight controllers in particular, are much more capable of doing some pretty impressive stuff as well as basic flight stabilization. Some of the most advanced flight controllers out there, so things that are running iNav flight and things that are running RD pilot can be set up to fly completely autonomously. So you can uh, upload a mission to it and then it'll just fly all itself and do everything. So there's a broad range of stuff here. And again, don't worry about the jargon too much. I'm going to try and keep it to a minimum as we go through the slides. So the flight controller itself is a little bit of hardware. It looks like a little circuit board normally, but if you're looking at the latest Pixhawk family, it can look like a little black cube stuck on top of a board full of connections. Now this is actually a little computer. It has a CPU, it has memory, it has IO ports. So it is like a little computer that you would use every day to do your email or access the web or whatever. But this hardware, this little PCB board needs some firmware to run on it, a program, if you want to think of it like that, that actually uh, does all of the work. So the, the flight controller has all of the pieces of a computer and you're loading the software on it. That software, because it kind of lives on the board, is called firmware. And that's what things like iNav, Beta Flight, Ardu Pilot are, are, are actually, that's actually the firmware that you have to flash or load onto the flight controller. Very few flight controllers come with that stuff already on, or if they do, it's typically an older version that you need to update anyway. And that's commonly what I do in my build videos. In the very early part, I kind of update the firmware or the software bit onto the hardware flight controller so that those two bits go together. The third part in this trinity is usually a program that goes onto your computer. And that program is used to flash or upload the firmware onto the hardware flight controller, but then is also used to set everything up and uh, calibrate things like the radio and other pieces. So when the, with the three things together, the hardware, the firmware that's loaded onto the hardware, 
and the PC application that you run on your computer, those three things work together to make the flight control system. Now there are loads and loads of flight controller options. I started out in the very early days on this channel with something called MultiWii, which sound rude, but it isn't. So things like the MultiWii, APM, CC3D, NASI32, they were stuff that was in vogue five, six, year, six years ago. Uh, you don't want to be using any of those. Don't touch them with a barge pole. Um, these days you want to be looking at flight controllers that have a relatively modern CPU. So that's an F4 based flight controller and that's what the F4, F7 is actually referring to. It's uh, how powerful the flight controller uh, CPU is that's actually on the little uh, PCB board. And with modern flight control firmware, it needs more and more processing power in order to run. So these days an F4 board is kind of the minimum. F7 and H7, which is even more powerful, are becoming the norm. So those are the kind of things that you need to look at. With the explosion of the multicopter revolution, lots and lots of flight controllers these days are built so that you can attach the four ESCs on the corners and build a quadcopter. And I've used quite a lot of them on the channel. And some flight controllers need a separate power distribution board or PDB that you connect all the power into. That's where the battery connects to and the ESCs connect to as well. And it maybe passes the voltage around. And also typically that board then plugs into the flight controller and the flight controller then uh, can monitor the voltage and currents that are being used to keep track of how much battery is left. So that's the other part of the system that you might come across. But most modern flight controllers these days are what are called all-in-one or AIO boards. They have that power distribution board. They have all the flight controller bits, all the pads that you need actually on board. And some flight controllers are what are called all-in-one or AIO flight controllers and they have all the pieces on one little circuit board everywhere where you connect your servos or your speed controllers or things like the battery power and the power connections for the ESCs inside the model as well. All-in-one boards make for really clean simple installations and I'm a big fan of those because it means you have one board that does everything rather than two or three boards that you have to try and fit inside your model. There are different kinds of flight controllers and some of them are suited, as I've just mentioned, to some applications rather than others. Some of them are multi-purpose, so if they've got lots of connections for outputs for things like servos and speed controllers, then they could be used in pretty much anything. But you tend to find that they tend to be specialised, so the all-in-one boards typically tend to be aimed at multi-rotors, but some of the Matek boards are built specifically for wings. So do watch the build videos on the channel for the ones that I'm using, because I'm always trying to use the latest and greatest and use flight controllers that I haven't done before to show how they all go together. Some of the larger flight controllers that are designed for more complex installations where you're going to have things like GPS, external compasses, airspeed sensors, LiDAR, sonar sensors, those kind of things will have lots of what called UARTs. I'm going to talk about some of the three and four letter acronyms on the slide in a minute. And those are just places where you can plug stuff in. Typically the smaller boards will only uh, have pads or pins for a very small number of those kind of UARTs or I squared C ports. I squared C is, a, is another system. Again, we'll talk about this in a minute, but it's just the way that you connect all these external parts onto it. It may be for a simple quadcopter, you don't need any of that. You just need to install the receiver on one side and then you can connect the four ESC motor connections on the corner of an all-in-one flight controller and you're done. But typically you're going to add some FPV stuff and I'll talk about that towards the end. Let me talk a little bit about what flight controllers actually do. So we've talked about the fact that the flight controller sits in the middle of the radio receiver and all of the flight control systems on the plane. So speed controllers, servos or whatever. Now the flight controller can do almost nothing. And typically the way it works is the flight controller does all the mixing for you. So if you have a V-tail plane or uh, you have a quadcopter, 
you're only sending uh, that you want to maybe roll to the right via the radio the flight controller is then figuring out which motors need to slow down which ones need to speed up and feeling with its accelerometers and gyroscopes on board how that movement is happening and comparing it to how you said you want it happening in the software and all that comes together and it kind of does it now there are some common modes that you're going to come across when you're talking about flight controllers so let me talk about four of the basic ones first one is what's called angle mode now angle mode is like a self stabilization mode if you want to think of it like that uh, it usually has a limit on the pitch and roll of the aircraft so you can't turn it over you can't uh, get into too much trouble and with angle mode if you take your hands off the sticks it will normally auto level the vehicle whether that's a fixed wing model or it's a multi-motor horizon is angle mode with extras so horizon will act like angle mode if you're just flying gently but if you push the sticks right to the edge of their travel on your radio then it will overcome that limit that you've got of um, of pitch and roll and yaw and it will actually then start to be able to flip and roll so angle is very much for beginners and for learning to fly i would suggest or I still use it sometimes these days for gentle cruising. Uh, Horizon is when you want to start being a little bit more uh, aggressive. Maybe you want to do loops and rolls and flips in the model that you're doing. Next one is sometimes called manual mode or rate mode. That's where you don't want any real help from the flight controller apart from the mixing that it's doing again you know you're only using one stick on the radio but it might be affecting several motors and a multi-rotor in fact it almost certainly will be or it'll be moving particular controls on the uh, on the fixed wing model and in rate and manual mode is doing the absolute basic for you so it's like the very basic stuff that a stabilizer would do in a traditional fixed wing model and then finally, if you are adding things like a GPS and using stuff like iNav or iDoPilot, then you can do some really cool stuff. You can do things like GPS loiter, where you can kind of park the vehicle in the sky uh, with a plane. It will just circle around a particular point it was at when you in initiated GPS um, hold or loiter. You can also do GPS return to home. So in the event of a problem or fail safe, it'll actually fly back to you. Uh, and with a multi-rotor, uh, with iNav or or Ardu Copter, it'll actually then land automatically and disarm itself as well. So again, you, you don't have to have really complicated systems with lots of things added onto it and plugged in. You can be very basic. The builds that I tend to do, I tend to like to show how you add all those extra things. And then if you wanted to, you could. And we'll talk a little bit more about the differences between things like Beta Flight, iNav and Ardu Pilot in a minute. So let me cover some more of these three and four letter acronyms. Uh, first one we'll talk about what called UARTs. Uh, these UARTs are usually four pads on a flight controller. These are the plus five volts of ground to transmit or receive. Typically you're gonna plug things like uh, GPS or telemetry radios into them. Uh, they are universal so you can have them running at different speeds with different protocols. They are fantastic. So some of the really big modern flight controllers have lots of UART ports available and you can plug lots of things into it. The next one that you'll see me talk about is I squared C or IIC, it's a bus architecture that you can plug lots of different things in. Now, external compasses tend to run on I squared C, but other sensors can. Now, you can have multiple things connected into one I squared C connection because it's like a little computer network with a UART that we've just talked about. It tends to be a UART is dedicated for one specific peripheral, whether that's a tele telemetry radio or a GPS or something else. But they're just, both of them, just ways that you can connect other devices to your flight controller and get them to work. SBUS is the most common protocol you're going to come across these days. It's the uh, protocol or the way that the receiver talks to the flight controller and sends the information about where all the controls are on the radio that's in your hand. There, there are lots of other options available. There's um, FPOR, iBUS, CRSF. Loads of other different ways that people can use, but SBUS is probably going to be the most common. And SBUS is really only used in uh, these days to just get the signals from your receiver into the flight controller. 
S bus is really good because it's a digital signal and that digital signal means you can error check and there's also extra things around all the channel positions so the flight controller can see when there's a problem, an error or a failsafe condition and take appropriate action. And that failsafe condition might be return to home, fly back to you and land at your feet if you've got things like a GPS connected. So let me talk a little bit now about the different firmwares that you're probably going to come across if you watch any of the builds on the series. Let me talk about the three most common ones that you're going to bump into watching stuff on YouTube. The first one and probably the ones that's got the most video by far and away is going to be Betaflight. Now Betaflight's been around for a while and it tends to be focused on multi-rotor racing. So it's really aimed at that. It's all about giving the most locked in feel and the fastest responses for flying a quadcopter typically very quickly. It's not very good and lots of things outside of that so it doesn't really care about fixed wing. It has very limited GPS functionality but if you are looking for a quadcopter and you want to fly it without lots of extra sensors on it then uh, beta flight with a little all-in-one flight controller is going to be a great choice. Next one is iNav Flight, commonly referred to as iNav. Now iNav and Beta Flight had a common ancestor and iNav, rather than just focus on the quadcopter side, went away to focus initially on all the GPS flight modes. So in iNav, if you want GPS functionality, it has an awful lot of that stuff sorted out. It's great for loitering, return to home. It'll even fly autonomous missions. You can program that, upload it into the flight controller, and the flight controller will just take off and do its own flight. It is probably not as polished as beta flight in terms of the high-end performance for things like quadcopter racing, but it is absolutely great also at fixed wing. And I tend to, if I'm building a fixed wing these days, use iNav if uh, if I just want a nice clean simple installation that supports all the modern protocols. The last one that you'll see on my channel is something called ArduPilot. Now ArduPilot originally was just for things like the APM hardware and Pixhawk and the ArduPilot family consists of things like ArduCopter, ArduRover, ArduPlane, ArduSub, so there's lots of different versions of it depending on what you want to fly. So whereas with Betaflight it's really just quad, well, multi-rotors. With iNav, it's fixed wing and multi-rotors. With uh, Ardu Pilot, it is all kinds of stuff. Now, iNav at the moment are developing also for things like rovers and other platforms as well, which is exciting. But Ardu Pilot has been doing it for a very long time. Now, in terms of bulletproof code, Ardu Pilot is right up there. And I did a couple of builds last year putting Ardu Pilot onto non-Pixhawk technology because they support third-party boards now, things like the Omnibus and the Matek flight controllers, and adding things like the uh, telemetry radials, adding things like the GPS, using things like UARTs and I2C ports have been a fantastic experience for me here. I'm a big fan of Ardu Pilot, but it hasn't got the support for all the modern protocols and isn't as slick on things like FPV, where you're adding some kind of contextual information over the view from the camera in your goggles. All that stuff is relatively new, and if you want to control your video transmitter using SmartPort or Tramp, or you want to support lots of the new technologies like CRSF, which is a low latency connection that uh, Team Black Sheep developed, the other two support that stuff, RD Pilot doesn't yet. If you're interested in knowing more about that, hopefully that gives you a bit of context and you can go and watch the series on the channel. Go and have a look in the playlist. Um, there's lots and lots of builds using all this technology to show you the differences. Last thing I'll talk about, which I've touched on a little bit, is FPV. Now, FPV is where you are going to fly by looking out live through a little camera mounted at the front of the model. Now, in planes or multi-rotors, you can just have the camera connected to a video transmitter that sends the signal to your goggles and you can watch it and fly it first person view, which is FPV stands for. Most modern flight controllers, though, are smarter than that. You connect the video uh, from the camera into the flight controller and then you connect a video out from the flight controller into the video transmitter that then sends it to the goggles. And what the flight controller does very cleverly 
is overlays key flight information. So flight time, battery voltage, uh, distance from home, if you have things like GPS, ground speed, all the, the flight mode that you're in, all that goodness can be popped around the outside of the image. And it's great for keeping an eye on how much time you've got left or whereabouts you are related to where you took off. Some flight controllers are more advanced with this than others. So one of the flight controllers that I really like, for example, is the uh, Brain FPV flight controller that has a graphical on-screen display, but flight controllers from people like Maytech, Holobro, um, all those guys actually have an on-screen display. And again, it's the on-screen display is supported by all three of the firmwares that I've just talked about. That's iNav, Betaflight, and RD Pilot as well. A couple of last things to think about. The DJI Air unit doesn't work in exactly that way. It works slightly differently. At the moment, the only support is really for beta flight for the DJI Air unit. I'll link to the video that talks about that. And my last point in this video is there are some flight controllers that have been around for a long time. Things like the Pixhook family don't have inbuilt support for an on-screen display uh, for FPV. So unfortunately, if you want that kind of stuff with FPV, you have to use additional boards. Again, see my uh, builds with Pixhook where I show you how to do that. So I'm going to stop there. Hopefully that's enough information for those of you new pilots who are interested in flight controllers but were just getting lost in the build series and enough context so that you can go and watch them and it'll make more sense. A flight controller is just a little computer running some firmware on there that is then doing a lot of the flying for you. How much of that you can decide by flicking a, a switch on your radio that selects the flight mode. It can be very basic and just do the essentially what a stabilizer would do if you use that in a fixed wing, or it can be super duper complex with GPS, airspeed sensors, LIDAR, and all those kind of other things and fly everything autonomously. And you can get stuff that will do everything in between. So if you have any questions or comments, please pop them down below and I'll put links down below to some of my mo most recent build series. So now hopefully armed with that understanding, you can watch them and they'll make more sense. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.